Hi, I'm Mr. Simons and in this video we're going to talk about some problems with the circular flow of income model. In terms of the model itself, it is so widespread that any time you are being asked to study economics, it is likely that this model is being used because it's really helpful to understand the basics about an economy. But what I want you to also think about is that there are some limitations to this model, just like any model, because we're trying to make something simple out of something extraordinarily complex, which is an economy. So the general limitation is that the five sector model simplifies the economy enormously. So can we really explain a whole economy by simplifying it into five sectors and 10 flows? If we're looking at the model itself, say we take the household sector, can we really safely assume that all of the individuals and households in that sector will act in the same way. If you think about the people around you, people make such different decisions in the same situations. It's very hard to think about all these sectors and assume that everyone that falls into them will act in identical ways. That's a bit of a limitation of the model. In terms of simplifying the economy, that this model excludes a really important player in any economy, and that is that of a central bank. For example, the RBA isn't really kind of given a place in the circular flow of income model. And this is a real limitation because in any economy, the central bank plays such a key role in terms of affecting money supply, in terms of affecting the amount of money in the economy and indirectly influencing really important things like interest rates. So in the way that the RBA affects the cash rate, that then affects the general level of interest rates, that then affects borrowing, growth, inflation, unemployment, all sorts of macro variables, that is not illustrated in terms of the operation of the five sector model. We can't really blame the model because if you're trying to simplify something complicated, you can't make it as complicated as the thing in real life. But it is important to note that we give up a lot of detail when we are trying to simplify an extremely complex thing like an economy into these five sectors and these 10 different flows. So one specific limitation of the model is that it does not show household borrowing. So when we're thinking about the model and we're having a good look at it, that we can see the financial sector lending to firms and that is the investment flow. But we don't see the financial sector lending to households, which should be a really important part of understanding how an economy works. Why do I say this? Well, lending to households is a very important flow in the economy. I'm just gonna read these numbers so I don't get it wrong. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, in December 2021, households took out nearly $33 billion of new home loans. So that's either to buy a new home to live in or to buy a home or a house and apartment, sorry, to then rent out as an investor. This is a massive injection in the economy of banks lending that amount of money that is then spent on housing. But this injection is not included in the five sector model. Likewise, when we're not looking at household borrowing, we're then not gonna be able to look at household repayments because if households are borrowing huge sums of money, then they're going to have to repay that money and the interest, which is a leakage. Another specific limitation of the five sector model is that it doesn't show firms buying imports. So if you look at the interactions with the international sector, that yes, we've got a situation where households are buying imports, but then in the international sector, the exports are then going to firms in the sense that people and businesses overseas are buying goods and services from Australian businesses. This is considered an export because the goods and services flow overseas, but the money flows into Australia. However, the model doesn't capture imports that are being bought by firms. And this is actually a really important flow in the economy. Just think about all the goods and services that are purchased by Australian firms from overseas. A restaurant purchases fancy cheese from Italy. An outdoor recreation store like Anaconda 
purchases stock from overseas to then sell to local customers, or a school buys online products such as access to the Google or Microsoft suite of products, and this involves money leaving Australia in order to pay for access to these products. Is this flow important? Actually, yes, it kind of is. That if we go back to figures from the ABS, in the September quarter of 2021, imports of capital goods, which are typically done by businesses, not a lot of individuals and households are buying capital goods, that the value of imports of capital goods in the September quarter of 2021 totaled around $1.4 billion. So this is a leakage that is more than a billion dollars that is not being um, conveyed or shown in the model. So this is a limitation. So I guess the big question then is, does this matter? This model has limitations, okay, so what? And I guess it all depends on what we're using the model for. If we're using the model to give us an understanding of what an economy looks like in very simple terms, how money moves around an economy in terms of leakages and injections, and then how different sectors interact with each other, then I think these limitations don't really matter. That we're trying to find a way in to understand the basics and the mechanics of an economy and if we're trying to do that and make it simple and accessible, yes, it's going to have limitations. I just think it's important to know what these limitations are so we don't try and tell a story or explain a concept using this model when in fact the flows are not actually captured. So if we're trying to understand the impact of household borrowing and buying property, that that flow isn't really captured here directly and so maybe it's not the best example in terms of trying to explain that concept. In terms of what you should watch next, can I suggest this video here? I think it would be really interesting and further your understanding of this subject. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.